This is part two in our series of lectures on section 4.2 dealing with the construction of functions. In this lecture we talk about the composition of functions and the associative law for composition. Suppose we have two functions, one function from set A to set B and another one from set B to set C. Then you'll recall that we've talked about the composition f composed with g. It's always a relation from A to C, and it's defined to be the following. It's the set of ordered pairs xz in A cross z, a C, such that there exists a y in B, such that xy is in f and yz is in g. The question is, is it the case that f composed with g is actually a function from A to C? Well, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the following theorem, which tells us that, in fact, the composition is always a function. When you compose two functions, you always get a function. It says that G, uh, f composed with g is a function from a to c, and furthermore, it tells us uh, the value um, of the function associated to x in a. Uh, the value f composed with g at x is equal to g of f of x. Well, this isn't the most exciting result in the world, and it's probably something that you would anticipate is true, but uh, we're going to do it as an exercise just in writing proofs and then just working with working definitions. It's really not a bad exercise in doing that. So in order to prove the theorem, we have to do two things. In order to show that f composed with g is, is actually a function, we have to show that its entire domain is a, and we have to show that for each argument x, it has exactly one image. So that means for every z and w in c, we have to show that if xz is in the relation, and if xw is in the relation, then z equals w. Well, what is involved in the first one? Well, recall what is the working definition of the domain of something. The domain of g composed with f is defined to be the set of all x in A such that there exists a z in C such that xz is in f composed with g. And let's just expand on what it means to be an element of the composition. Uh, that means that there exists a, a, a z in C. Um, rather, uh, to expand on what it means to say that xz is in the composition is to say that there exists a y in B, such that xy is in f and yz is in g. So in order to prove that the domain of f composed with g is equal to all of A, we have to prove that this last set is all of A. So that means we have to give ourselves any arbitrary x in A, and we have to prove that we can choose this z and this y, uh, satisfying these properties. And also, in order to prove that this happens, this number 2, well that's clear what we would have to do, and uh, just a matter of reading from left to right, we'd give ourselves an x, we'd give ourselves z and w, we would suppose that this is true, and we would deduce that this happens. Okay, so let's see if we can write the proof. So I'm, I'm writing this at the top of the screen just to remind you that by definition this is the domain of f composed with g, and it's our task to prove that that's equal to all of A. So that's what I'm going to do on this first slide. So why don't you put your video on pause and see if you can go ahead and do that. And when you come back, I'll go over my solution with you. Well, here's my proof. And the beginning of the proof, uh, right down to here, is just basically... Um, setting up uh, what I did on the previous page. So we already know that f composed with g is a relation from a to c. In order to prove that it's a constant, uh, a function from a to c, we have to prove the following two things, that its domain is equal to all of a, and this one here which basically says that every argument of the domain um, has a unique image. So to prove one, we have to prove that every element of A satisfies this property. 
because that would prove that every element of A is in the domain of this function f composed with g. So I have to show that, um, so I start with let x be an element of A, and then I have to explain to you how to choose this y and this z so that this happens. So I, what I do is I say choose y in B such that y is equal to f of x. So I, I know that I can do that because capital F is a function from A to B. And next I choose a z in C such that z is equal to g of the y that I've just written down. I know I can do that because g is a function from B into C. Well, at this point I now know that this xy is an element of f because of this, and yz is an element of g uh, because of this. And so at this point I really have accomplished everything here, and so I've really proved that um, x is an element of the domain of f composed with g. But I guess I go a little bit farther here by reminding you that um, to say that these two things ha happen is to say that xz is an element of f composed with g, which I guess makes um, a stronger case that x is an element of the domain of this relation. But at the same time, we've also proved that x comma g of f of x is an element of f composed with g because, um, because of this fact here, that x z is an element of g of f, and z is um, g of f of x. So that proves this as well. Now it remains only for us to prove this, namely that uh, each argument of the domain has a single unique image. So why don't you put your video on pause, read this from left to right, and see if you can write a formal proof of it. When you come back, I'll show you my argument. Well, here's my proof. So as I read from left to right, I say let x be an element of A and let z and w be elements of C. Then this is a conditional statement, so I assume that my hypothesis is true. Suppose xz is in this composition and suppose xw is in this composition. So we'll be done once we show that z equals w. So obviously we're going to have to somehow make use of the fact that both f and g are functions. So, looking here, what is the formal definition that xz is an element of that composition? It is that there exists a y1 in b, such that xy1 is in f, and y1z is in g. And the working definition of this uh, statement is that there exists a y2 in b, such that uh, xy2 is in f, and y2w is in g. Now look at this one. And this one, we have xy1 and xy2 are both elements of f. Those are ordered pairs with the same argument, the same first component. Therefore, since f is a function, y1 and y2 must be equal. So now look at this one and this one, but we'll rewrite this one by replacing y2 by y1. So we have y1z is in g, y, y1w is in g, those are two ordered pairs with the same first component. Therefore, since g is a function, z must equal w. And that's the proof. Well, as a corollary of this theorem, a corollary just means a theorem which follows fairly easily from a theorem that has just been proved. So as a corollary, we get what's called the associative law, which says that essentially if we compose three functions, then it doesn't matter how we do the bracketing, as long as we do things in the same order. So why does this follow fairly easily from the um, theorem? Well, first of all, the theorem guarantees that this composition is a function. It's a function from uh, A to C. And so now we have a composition of a function from A to C with a function from C to D. Therefore, again, the theorem guarantees that that is a function from, from A to D. And furthermore, it guarantees that the image of any x in A is equal to 
h of g of f of x. Well, a similar argument will show the same thing about this. Namely, it will show that that is a function. It has domain a. It's a function from a to d. It has domain a, and furthermore, the value corresponding to an x in the domain is exactly h of g of f of x. Well, here I've, I'm writing down the details of what I just told you in words. By the theorem, we have all of the following. Both sides are functions from a to d. Both sides have domain a. And both sides satisfy that for every x in a, the um, value of the function at x corresponding is this. Now, back in lecture 4.1, um, it's actually 4.1 part 1. I didn't indicate that here. If you look on the very last slide of that lecture, you'll find a theorem uh, written in red, uh, which is exactly what we need here. It tells you when two functions are equal. It says the two functions are equal precisely when they have exactly the same domain, and also every um, argument x has exactly the same image. So that's exactly what we have in the present setting, and so we have the right by that theorem to conclude that these two functions are equal. And that concludes the proof.